Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we've got another installment of Hot Takes, where I went online and asked for your hot takes, particularly this episode being the responses from the YouTube community post and Twitter, uh, which I guess is X now, but uh, let's hop into it. Almost every time I hear someone say, you gotta check out this unknown upcoming dubstep artist, it's the same uninspired shit. Every small dubstep color-based artist sounds the same. I kind of want to agree with this one. Um, I kind of want to agree with it. There have been few times, honestly, where you guys were like, oh my gosh, you gotta check out this brand new artist, super small, you're gonna love them. And I was like, I love this. Most of the time I'm like, yeah, okay. So I kind of got to agree with this, I think, sadly. But that doesn't mean don't stop sending me new artist suggestions. I love hearing new artists and I love listening to new stuff. Um, but just don't say that they're the second coming of Christ every time you do. EDM nostalgia runs in roughly 25 year cycles. Uh, just like how right now we're getting reworks of late 90s EDM hits like Blue and What Is Love. In the late 2030s, we'll be getting reworks of early 2010s progressive house classics like Don't You Word Child and Levels. Uh, interesting thought. Um, that's an interesting idea. I, I, I'm not sure if the 25 year cycle is right oh wow the more i think about this i'm like huh maybe we'll be we will be getting some stuff in the next bunch of years but 25 years feels like a long time especially because um edm really hasn't been around for um that long uh and so i just feel like the cycles are gonna come around i don't know i think we're definitely in a wave right now of going back to some classics and a lot of commercial stuff is just covering older things i think it's also because a lot of copyright stuff has um just changed and the laws around it but uh, yeah, I'm, that's an interesting one. The more I think about this, the more I actually might agree with this. I would be fascinating to see what people would do to old Swedish House Mafia or Avicii songs, though. Um, part of me feels like that's like a golden calf. You don't really touch those. Um, but I will be fascinated to see what we do in the future. Maybe we will, um, but we'll see. I can see more producers using AI for their artwork and art covers, while the basic methods of AI art may not pay artists, uh, oh. I can see more artists using AI for their artworks and art covers. While the basic methods of AI art by not paying artists is terrible, I believe that there is a use for it in the EDM community, especially given how Core Digital took it with Anime, Rock, Paper, Scissors 1 and 2. Um, yes, I did also watch Anime, Rock, Paper, Scissors 1 and 2, and I know that had a bit of, like weird backlash from some people where they still said it was AI and didn't love it. And um, I do think the technology is interesting, but um, yeah, this one for me, I get it. I, and I get it. And here, and here's why I understand, like for someone like me, like a smaller, a uh, smaller, just in general content creator of any capacity, uh, if I want to make a really nice or like semi good looking thing, um, I, I, don't, I don't make money from YouTube. I barely make any money from YouTube. Barely, barely anything. I think it's like less than, it's like 30 bucks a month or something like that. Um, and I just, I don't want to spend so much money on an artist to do like something like that that may cost like a ton and uh, the resources. So I understand the struggle of like a, uh, like a, uh, a smaller content creator or artist that goes, I can do this for basically free and I can do it myself and I can adjust it and the AI works great. So I understand it. Um, that being said, I don't love it. I really don't love it. I think there's a, I don't know what it is. I think there's maybe like a certain threshold for me where once you have a certain amount of, I don't know, resources that you need to be not doing that. Um, and I guess it just depends what kind of level of expertise you want to go with uh, in any capacity as well. So uh, I, I mean, I'm also not an artist either, uh, both um, musical or uh, drawing wise. And so I'm not really neither end of the spectrum. I'm just someone that talks about it like this video right here. But uh, yeah, I'm always for favor of uh, paying people. And if that's paying people, to use AI, great, I think. Like, that's a weird double line there. Um, but uh, I'm always, I would always favor real artists 100% of the time, pretty much. In a song, every drop should be different and copy pasting the same drop onto two drops should be looked down upon. This isn't to say that you need to have a dubstep drop in a poppy melodic tune, but there should be a noticeable difference. Um, there should be a noticeable difference. A fake out and then having the same drop is not a noticeable difference. Uh, melody change, uh, addition to vocals to the second half, different placement of fills, different drum patterns, etc. Dubstep is the only genre of EDM that gets held to this standard, and it's no surprise to see the innovation that flows through the scene and how it's managed to survive as long as it has. 
that's fascinating for one reason. Um, personally, yes, I agree with this. I think every, I think it is generally lazy to to make to copy paste a drop. I think it needs to have something different. And I think so many songs, especially with shorter run times nowadays, are just getting away with making the same drop one, two, uh, two minutes and thirty seconds. I think it's a bad habit. Um, that being said, uh, the other point here we make about dubstep is the only genre that's held to the standard. I agree with that to some extent, actually. I don't really feel like I hear, uh, hear a ton of other people talk about um, other genres being like, oh, like dubstep for sure is the one that's held to that standard, specifically melodic dubstep. Um, if anything else, maybe drum and bass is held to more of a standard like that, and house, not at all. People are like, give me the same drop multiple times and I will love it. But um, yeah, I, I do agree with that. I just don't necessarily agree with the other fact that you say to see the innovation that flows through the scene. Um, and I know TKC, who made this comment, you're a lovely uh, dubstep fan, melodica fan. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, uh, yeah, that's that's a whole other can of worms that I feel like I've opened more and more than I should have in the past. But I do agree with you. It should be uh, different every single time, and that dubstep is the only one accountable, um, and I think we should be having more genres accountable, for sure. NCS and Monster Cat are having a very huge downfall nowadays. Both of the labels signed more and more uninspiring mainstream songs, and this really killed my listening experience. Um, interesting. Uh, I... I disagree with this. I think NCS has had a huge resurgence of um, just their style, what they've gone for. I feel like they did like a, almost a, a full rebrand re without doing an actual rebrand, um, so much so that I really started following NCS, I think, a fair amount. So um, Monster Cat, I think, is also on the up. I think they had a bit of a downer uh, somewhat last couple of years, but I think they're on the upward trajectory since the schedule change. Um, but uh, yeah, I, so I would disagree with this, um, but I would also love to know uh, when you started listening to both NCS and Monster Cat. Are you like a three-year fan or are you like uh, early 20, like 12, 13? I think that changes your perspective uh, on this. I would be willing to bet you're a uh, 2019 for sure listening to NCS Monster Cat. That would be my bet. New Skrillex is better than old Skrillex. New Skrillex is very different than old Skrillex. Uh, let's be honest about that. Uh, very, very different. And so I will say in terms of how things held up over time, I really do think old Skrillex did hold up. I think I, I go back and listen to some of the stuff and I actually think, um, and here's the interesting thing, I don't think it's a lot of his mainstream stuff. I don't think it's like your Bang Rang or the scary, scary Monsters, nice, nice Sprites or Equinox, but his like kind of um, other non-single tracks, I think held up really, really well. Um, like Kyoto, I think is absolutely amazing. Amazing. And um, yeah, it still holds up quite well today. And so I think they're just very, very different. Um, but I wouldn't say one is better than the other. I like both to some extent. Funk music will see a big resurgence and shift in style as more high quality funk will be released on labels such as Monster Cat, Circus, UKF, and others. I hard disagree with this. I think this is a hot take. I think funk is on the way out. I think um, funk's already seen its heydays, and I think funk is. Boom, headed out the door. I think it's seen its last real runs of popularity um, because I haven't listened to a ton of funk uh, or drift funk recently, and um, I it was forced upon me uh, on all social media stuff. It was forced upon me a ton. Uh, everyone was playing funk or making funk, um, and now I just don't really hear about it at all, uh, other than the one recent Monster Cat track. But um, I just don't hear about it anymore. So I uh, disagree with this. I think funk's going goodbye. Progressive House is the only EDM genre that, when done super generically, still sounds absolutely amazing. Um, I do think this sort of relates to the comment that TKC, TKC said earlier with the uh, different drops where, um, and I actually did say that, I, was, I forgot about this comment, but um, yeah, Progressive House and House in general, I think, just gets away with more of that stuff of being that more kind of simplistic style of track that is more easy, easy listening and uh, doesn't have to be too out there or crazy for people to really enjoy enjoy it. So, um, yeah, I, I think generic how there's way too much generic house out there though. I would say way too much. Um, and I wouldn't say, I actually wouldn't say generic house is the stuff that sounds super amazing. I think there's house that sounds or has like a similar tone to what could be more generic, but I think there's, there's subtle nuances that really take a track from going from generic to like to an absolutely stellar one. So, um, I get the sentiment here, but I also kind of want to flip it on its head. So I do and don't agree. That is a hot take. 